Hi everybody, so it's Dr. Connie. So today I want to talk about histamine intolerance. Some of you have asked me this, but it all comes back to the same thing. So please, please listen closely. So histamine intolerance is much more common than you think in autoimmune patients like lupus. Often the symptoms are not so obvious to the doctors because of the overlap with lupus symptoms. So what's the cause of histamine intolerance? Well, in a healthy individual, histamine is broken down by two enzymes, one called DAO, diamine oxidase, and HNMT, which is called histamine and methyltransferase. Okay, so DAO is produced in the intestine. So if the intestinal function is compromised, as is the case with many lupus patients due to leaky gut, there may be insufficient DAO to metabolize the histamine. So when the buildup of histamine occurs, so do the symptoms. So decreased DAO, it's an enzyme, production may be why histamine intolerance is more common in persons with gut issues, such as inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, celiac, and SIBO. It's also important to note that DAO activity can also be inhibited by certain medications. Ding, 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 we're all on medications, right? So lupus patients are on tons of meds, have leaky gut, and likely have DAO insufficiency to contribute to lupus flares and histamine intolerance. So what came first, the leaky gut, lupus, or histamine intolerance? So histamine intolerance is more widely accepted in Europe as a true medical condition and was recognized in 2012 by the German Society for Allergology and Clinical Immunology as a true disease with an unknown cause. So, lupus and histamine intolerance. Histamine intolerance appears to be more prevalent with those who have leaky gut coupled with inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, IBS, etc. And in the United States, histamine intolerance is not considered a disease. So we have limited data on the incidence of histamine intolerance and autoimmunity, of course. I can tell you that I've had this at the onset of my lupus and have had patients heal their gut following the elimination diet. It's completely free in this group and the alkaline detox protocol and were able to heal from the histamine intolerance, improving the DAO enzyme production and are doing great. So some of the, his, uh, the symptoms of histamine intolerance include headaches, migraines, sleep disturbance, vertigo or dizziness, high blood pressure or low blood pressure, severe menstrual cramping, irregular periods, anxiety and difficulty focusing, nausea or vomiting, abdominal cramps, sinus congestion, flushing in hives, fatigue, either too hot or too cold temperature, um, inability to control your own temperature, and increased heart rate, swelling and water retention. So the symptoms of histamine intolerance are erratic and inconsistent, so it can be very confusing and frustrating for you as a patient as well as the doctors. And as you can see, it overlaps a lot of the symptoms with lupus. So what is exactly histamine? Well, histamine is a compound involved in many functions in our body, like the immune system, digestion, nervous system, the cardiometabolic, and the endocrine system. It's a chemical messenger which helps to spread messages from your body to the brain. It's also part of our stomach acid, which helps to break down the food in our stomach. So antihistamines are usually prescribed for seasonal allergies, such as Benadryl, Zyrtec, Claritin, etc. Histamine's main role is to cause an acute inflammatory reaction to notify your immune system of potential toxins. It causes your blood vessels to swell by increasing the white blood cells to find and attack the pathogen in your body. And this is the innate immune response that I talk about. But because histamine is in the bloodstream, it can affect your gut, your lungs, skin, brain, and really the whole body potentially causing symptoms all over the body, making it very difficult to diagnose. So notice the similarities in the way lupus affects our body. There's a lot of overlap here. 
So what causes histamine intolerance? Well, one is allergies. It's not the food sensitivities, but it, this is real IgE reactions, not the IgG. It's the leaky gut, some GI bleeding, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and dopamine oxidase deficiency, histamine-rich foods, and um, how to, uh, I'm sorry, and then we're going to talk about how to avoid high histamine foods, okay? So the topic is controversial because histamine content of food depends on many variables, such as food storage, ripeness or maturity of fruits and veggies, cooking and processing, and it's also important to know that certain foods may, may be high in histamine, yet are high in compounds known as histamine activators, which can trigger similar symptoms by increasing histamine levels. So it gets a little bit confusing here. The list below contains commonly accepted high histamine fruits, so histamine activators, and this list is by no means complete. Available lists vary and consistent data is hard to find on histamine content of foods because of all the variables that I just mentioned. So what does seem to be agreed upon is that the fermented and aged foods do tend to be some of the biggest offenders. So some of them are alcohols like champagne, red wine, beer, white wine, fermented or smoked meats like fish, sardine, mackerel, herring, tuna, and salami, pickled or canned foods like soccer, sauerkraut, pickles, relishes, soy sauce, even kimchi, and fermented milk products like yogurt, yogurt, kefir, buttermilk, and aged cheese like Parmesan, Gita, Swiss, and cheddar, and fruits like dried fruit, strawberries and strawberry, uh, citrus fruits, and vegetables, tomatoes, tomato products, and spinach, and legumes like chickpeas, soybeans, and peanuts, and other like cinnamon and chocolate, grains, wheat, histamine activators also include citrus, papaya, pineapple, nuts, strawberries, egg, whites, and additives. And DAO blockers, which include alcohol, black, and green tea. So I want to just stop here for a minute and tell you, you see how confusing this is? Because a lot of you drink kombucha. We're all about the probiotics in the food, so people are infusing it into the kefirs and the likes. But while they may be good for some people, if you suspect histamine intolerance, you're not going to tolerate it very well. I don't tolerate it very well. And so you have to know what's right for you. So any, anytime there is food concerned, what may be medicine for some people may be poison. So it's something to keep in mind. So what do you do if you suspect histamine intolerance? Well, talk to your doctor to evaluate other possible conditions such as true allergies like IgE, like I mentioned, and immune disorders or some underlying digestive disorders. Once these possibilities have been evaluated and addressed, an elimination diet, there we go again, should be initiated to see if symptoms improve. A good food diary is essential, and underlying issues must be corrected first to optimize improvement. And because the diet is restrictive, especially if added onto an already restricted eating plan, please consult a professional to ensure proper nutritional intake. Right? Keep a food diary is essential to keep track of your symptoms to these foods. And many patients who have histamine intolerance must be careful as the diet can be severely restrictive. So get under the care of a medical or nutritional professional to ensure safe improvement. So supplementation is key, but not too much, just enough at optimal levels. So, how histamine intolerance is diagnosed? Well, there's no way to diagnose histamine intolerance. In functional medicine, though, we consider the elimination diet as the gold standard is why I promote it. Because within the elimination diet, you get rid of all the offenders. And treatment for histamine intolerance, um, this isn't just diet. Um, treat any underlying disorder first as the many improve histamine tolerance, which is healing your leaky gut. Right? So starting with the gut is key. And we usually recommend starting with the gut. And however, it's an integrated approach that is most effective. Again, 
including the elimination diet is a treatment of choice. And remember, everybody has it in this group for free under files. The tolerance um, to histamine varies greatly from person to person, and the amount of histamine tolerated must be revealed by trial and error by you. So while some can only tolerate very small amounts, others can be more liberal. So you have to kind of formulate your own uh, by trial and error, right? And another thing I recommend is yoga. Mindful practice of yoga tends to be very helpful for histamine intolerance, to calm anxiety, and to bring healing from within. Remember I always say, healing is an inside job. Another thing is sleep. It's so important to understand that sleep is everything. This is when our bodies are busy healing and regenerating. So you're not, if, so if you're not sleeping, it's going to sabotage your body's healing efforts. We have natural sleep supports available for you if you need help with this. I want you to aim for seven to eight hours of good deep sleep a night. Peer support is another thing that's so important. I want you to join our Lupus Rebel Facebook, and I'm saying this because I'm going to post this as a YouTube video, but those of you who are here, use us, you know, as your sounding board. Health crises like lupus and histamine intolerance can be a real challenge. Support from family, community, and online support groups like this can be so helpful. Relaxation is the next one. Take an Epsom salt bath, breathe, and learn to meditate. More to come on that later. And supplements. I found that the supplements for histamine control helps a ton. I have a supplement, um, the link will be in my blog, to take 30 minutes before the meals to decrease your symptoms if you truly do suspect this. It's a cheap little pill to get you started. We've got various detox programs, as you know, available for you from a simple PDF guide to an online five-week course to a full-on extensive three-month gut restoration program. So take advantage of these things. They've been all well thought out. The key is to know that there are answers to these issues. So I will talk to you soon, but please share, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms, YouTubes, and please like and share this content with as many people that can benefit from it as, as possible. And I'll see you next time.